Hallelujah. Praise God. Because God is so good and he has allowed us this, this moment tonight. Hallelujah. When as I believe what Lou said, there's probably some that wanted to be here tonight and, and can't be here for whatever reason. Uh, remember those that are sick and shut in. I uh, went by the hospital this afternoon to peek in on uh, uh, Deacon Stalin. Not Deacon Stalin, Deacon Stalin, not you, uh, Alexander Secretary. The, you, you, you threw me off when you talked about how long you were in there, the four days that you didn't hear this now. But Alexander Secretary, and uh, Alexander was out sleeping. And I thought he was in the bed sleeping. I mean, I, you know, well, that's how he's out. And I ain't like some people. Some people feel like because they showed up, you got to see that. And they're going to wake you up. Let me tell you, when I go in the hospital to visit somebody, if they sleeping, I ain't waking them up. Because they need their rest. Yeah, right. I understand they won't get woke up enough by the nurses and the doctors coming <laughs> and poking and prodding and testing and, and all of that. So I said me a little silent prayer, Lord bless and I stepped right back on out that room. Amen. You ain't got to see me. I'll tell them I stopped by. Amen. That, that's, all, that's all you need to know. And, uh, and so I, I just thought I'd share that with you. Don't be that person when you go to the house and feel, oh, they don't see me. <laughs> I'm going to wake them up if they, I came all the way to the hospital. They won't see me. No, let them rest. Because <laughs> he was sleeping real good. <laughs> Amen. And so, so we certainly, we certainly, we certainly give God praise. And uh, as we prepare now, because it is that time to come forth and, and bring the word. Amen. Uh, we started, you know, we started at nine with just a few in the house. But we persevered and went on and did what we needed to do. Right. I want to thank uh, Deacon Howard and Deacon Williams for carrying us through. Amen. Uh, for a moment, I thought I was going to have to preach for an hour and a half. <laughs> Amen. Thank God I only got to preach for a little while. Yeah. But uh, as we prepare to go through this message, you know, I, that counts for blessings one of my testimonial songs. Uh, testimony of song, and then my other uh, get ready to bring this word is this song that says, So many times the Lord made a way for me.
Those words, while it did not mean all of us at the time, amen, there's still some strong and powerful words. We the people, we're establishing a constitution. We're establishing something because we're forming this new nation. Amen. It started with the Declaration of Independence. And why this is important, why I brought that in, is that Nehemiah said the people had a mind to work. And what I want to share with us tonight as we go forward into 2024 is that it's not always so much about the leader, what the leader is going to do, what the people are going to do. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. It's what the people have in mind to do. Because God may give the leader something to give to the people, but if the people are here, in Nehemiah's case, if the people had listened to Tobiah and Samuel and had given up, Nehemiah couldn't do anything by himself. People miss it, and they often say, well, well, when trouble happened in our community, they say, what the pastor's going to do? What the pastor's going to do? Where the pastor? Oh, where the people? Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Pastor can't do anything by himself. He's got to have some people that have a mind to work. We've got to begin to focus on we, the people, as a collective body, and not just the leadership, but how we all work together, because even the best of leaders can't accomplish anything if you don't have good followers. Amen, somebody. You don't have somebody look. All oh, them, I did was showed up. He went to survey the land. And he came back and told them what God had placed in his heart to do for the city. And they came together, and the word says the people had a mind to work. Amen. We, the people. Amen. It's always about the people, y'all. 1 Samuel 10, 22 through 24 says this. 1 Samuel 10, 22 through 24. Therefore, they inquired the Lord further. Has the man come yet? This is when Saul was selected as king. Saul was hiding out. He didn't want to really be king. Amen. And so, and the Lord answered, there he is, hidden among the equipment. Saul was hiding. <laughs> so they ran and brought him from there. And when he stood among the people, he was taller than any of the people from his shoulder upward. And Samuel said to all the people, do you see him whom the Lord has chosen that there is none like him among all the people? So all the people, somebody said we the people. <laughs> so all the people shouted saying, long live the king. The people came together and accepted Saul as king because Samuel said God chose him. Amen. But you know the same guy that, that, that stood out, the same guy or somebody special at the moment messed up a little further down in 1 Samuel 15, 20 through 21. And Saul said to Samuel, this is what God had not done. Now that was right, that was chapter 10, where he was anointed king. Just five chapters later. In 1 Samuel 15, he says, God sent him on a mission. He didn't do everything God told him to do. And Saul said to Samuel, But I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and gone on the mission which the Lord sent me, and brought back Agag, king of Amalek. Well, God had told him to destroy everything, don't bring nothing back. That was the first thing he brought back the king. I have undestroyed the Amalekites. Verse 21. But the people, somebody said, We the people. <laughs> but the people took the plunder, sheep and oxen, and the best of the things which should have been under destroyed to, to sacrifice the Lord your God at Gilgal. Amen, somebody. The people, the same people that said, long live the king, the same people messed around and messed the king up because they wanted to bring a sacrifice when God didn't ask for a sacrifice. He didn't ask them for a sacrifice. We, the people, can mess something up. Amen, somebody. And so we've got to recognize that. In Genesis 11, 5 through 6, in Genesis 11, 5 and 6, but the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the Son of Man had built. And the Lord said, Indeed, the people are one. And they all have one language. And this is what they began to do. Now, nothing that they, that they propose to do will be withheld from them. I like that one. I share that a lot of times because you got to understand, whatever the people, somebody said, We the people. <laughs> Whatever the people get in their mind to do and they come together, they can do it. That's what God said. God said, when we the people come together with the same mindset, with the same thought, with the same purpose, God said nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. There is power in we the people. There is power in the people coming together on all the cause. To bring about a thing for the Lord, amen, or to do evil one or the other. Amen. We the people can do good or 
only the people can do bad. Amen, somebody. Yeah. I've seen it happen in churches. Yeah. Amen. When we the people got mad at the pastor and fired him because he wasn't doing how they wanted it done. Yeah. Well, that the man was wrong or the man was bad. Amen. He used to do the way a few people like, and those few people have power. <laughs> you know, in every congregation, there's some power people. Amen. And they're able to sway other people to come on their, on their time, amen. And you know, we're in the Baptist church, all you need is 51%. <laughs> and, and if you get 51% of the membership to go along with you, you got the majority. Amen. And we said, well, in our covenant, we said we agree to abide by the rule of the majority. 51%, amen. All you need is 51%, you can get rid of me. <laughs> oh, yeah, like it, no, they yeah, yeah, you can get rid of Pastor Land. Get to 1%, that's all you need. Amen. Right? And that's all this. And we the people can do it. You gotta understand the power of we the people. And I'm sharing this because as we go forth into 2024, I want us to understand the power of our collectiveness, the power of our mindset. When we come together as one, we, the people, can make things happen. We, the people, can bring about change in our community. We, the people, can bring about change in our county. We, the people, can bring about change in our states and change in this place that we call the United States of America. Come on, somebody. I'm starting by to let you know that we the people can do it, right? The text for tonight informs us in Nehemiah 4 6. So we built the wall. We built the wall, and the entire wall was drawn together up to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. Come on, somebody. The people had a mind to work. They were successful because we, the people, had a mind to work. Every meaningful, significant work starts in the minds and hearts of we, the people. As we move forward in 2024, I want to encourage you this word of God in Genesis 11, 6 still stands true when he said the people are one. And they all have one language. And this is what they began to do. Now nothing that they propose to do will be withheld from them. That's what God said. Translation to bring it out term. God is saying when we the people come together as one, there is nothing impossible for us to accomplish. As we move forward into 2024, there are eight things that I want to run through real quick that I want you to understand. Eight things that we the people must do, that we must embrace. The first thing is, if we want to do anything great, as we the people, we must know God. Amen. We the people must know him. John 17, 3. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. We've got to know him and know how good he is and know how powerful he is. And know that when God is on our side, there's nothing too hard for our God. We got to have a Joshua and Caleb attitude. When Joshua and Caleb came back, they said, we can go in and take the land. Twelve spies. Ten of them said, we can't do it. You know that majority, right? Ten said, we can't do it. And two of them said, oh, wait a minute, y'all. Hallelujah. If God is with us, we can go and take the land. But the majority prevailed. As a result, they were in the wilderness for 40 years. Come on, somebody. And all that do is go to take the land. I like Philippians 3 7. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted lost for the excellence of Christ. Verse 8 says this, Philippians 3 8. Yet indeed I also count all things lost for the excellence of the knowledge. Somebody said knowledge. Now of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish, that I may gain Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which is from God by faith. Verse 10 says, that I may know him, 
and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being conformed to his death. And Father, verse 11 says, if by any means I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Paul said, I want to count everything else lost. I'm putting everything behind me so I can know who, know God, and know him in the power and the power of his resurrection. If we know God and the power of his resurrection, that God's able to raise up someone from the dead, that God called forth his son, if we know him and the power of his resurrection, we'll walk with a certain stature and we won't be afraid to tackle difficult things. But we know there ain't nothing too hard for God. Amen, somebody. Is there anything too hard for God? So we, we the people must know him. Second point is, we the people must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen, somebody. If we're going to do anything great for God, and we're going to do anything great in the land, we got to know him, and we must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you something. There's something about the Holy Spirit that takes away fear. Amen. There's something of the Holy Spirit that drives us and moves us and helps us to walk with confidence, knowing that God is on our side. And whenever fear comes upon us, we overcome fear by the power that's in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. For when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. These men who were hiding from the fair, from Pharaoh and all of them, these kids, they were hiding from the chief priests and all of them. They were hiding because they were afraid. Oh, but when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they stepped out with boldness and began to proclaim the goodness of God. And they weren't afraid to die. They weren't afraid of what they had because they knew God. And now they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they weren't afraid to tell about Jesus Christ. Well, hear that said, y'all talk about that. If y'all mess around talking about Jesus, we're going to kill you. But they weren't afraid. <laughs> Ephesians 5, 18 through 21. And do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another, amen, in the fear of God. That paragraph, that passage, Ephesians 5, 18 to 21, talks about being filled with the Spirit, but also how we ought to be with one another. It isn't just one by yourself. Look what he's saying. Speaking to one another. In songs and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your hearts. In other words, we're working together. We're singing together. We're helping one another. When somebody's down and out, we reach down and help them up. We pick them up because we're working together. We know God will fill with the Holy Spirit. And it's not just about me anymore. There's something about it. And when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you become unselfish. And you become selfless. It's no longer about you. But what I can do to help somebody else. So if we want to do anything big in 2024, we've got to come together. We need to know him and be filled with his Holy Spirit. Uh, you got to let the Spirit come in. We must not only know him and be filled with the Spirit, but we must be holy people. Y'all hear what I just said? We must be holy people. Second Peter chapter 3 tells us that. Second Peter chapter 3 beginning verse number 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Right. In which the heavens will pass away with a great noise. And the elements will melt with fervent heat. Both the earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of persons ought you to be in holy conduct and godliness? In holy conduct and godliness, looking for an answer to the coming of the day of God, by the cause of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to the promise, look for new heavens and new earth with righteousness to dwell. You gotta be holy, be holy in your conduct, be holy in what you're doing. God said, Be holy because I am holy. 
He who has called you is holy. So we have to be holy and live for holiness. That doesn't mean we're better than anybody else. Being holy simply means you're living according to the word. Being holy doesn't put you above somebody else because they're on the street. Being holy simply says, I'm surrendered to God and I'm living for him and I'm doing what he called me to do. I don't put anybody else down. Amen. I don't frown upon people because I'm better than them. Because I'm holy. I'm sanctified. No, 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 no. Holiness is also involved trying to help somebody else get where you are. You don't do that by putting folk down. You don't help people by going in there down. I know how You know better than that. It's best if somebody who grew up in the church, you know they grew up in the church, and you go, you don't go witness to them and have compassion. You know, you know better than that. <laughs> you need to get your butt back in the church. Hey Amen, somebody. How you gonna win somebody to church like that? Hey Amen. What you just did, you push them further away, because now you just made yourself above them. That's right. As if you weren't out there before yourself. Hey Amen. Hey. Y'all have a pass. Be holy, for I am holy. He calls us to be holy. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, he said, Just as he chose us, it is us in him before the founding of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. He called us to be holy people. And holiness only means that we're in the right relationship with God. We've been predestined by Jesus Christ to be in this relationship. So in 2024, we the people must know him. We must be filled with the Spirit. And we must be holy. But the fourth thing is, we the people must shine as new lights. We've got to shine as lights in this dark world. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled under the foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Verse 16, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. We are called to be light shiners. We must shine as light in this dark world. Let your light so shine that someone who's walking in darkness may find their way to the Lord. Let your light so shine that somebody who's lost will want to follow you along the way. Let your light shine. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. We as light have got to walk in a way and compel somebody to come our way. There's something about it that when you live in that way and you walk in it, you may be going through hardship, but you walk in a certain way because you're light and you're salt with salt, salt and light. Salt and light. Amen, somebody. You've got to understand that when Israel messed up, when they turned away from God, when they started worshiping pagan God, it messed them up because it messed up the relationship. Israel was supposed to be the light. Israel was supposed to direct others. He told Abraham, through you the world will be blessed. And Israel went into the land, and what they decided, we want to be like the rest of the people. No, we the people can't be like the other people. I know, hear me. We the people got to know God. We got to know him for ourselves. And we've got to shine his light. We must know him. We must fill with the spirit. We must be holy. We must shine as the light. Oh, uh, number five is we must, we the people, must be prayer warriors. If we're going to do anything great, my brothers and sisters, we the people must be prayer warriors. Let me tell you something. Everybody can pray. Don't get confused. You don't have to pray like that great prayer person that you hear that, and they come over here, they can pray so good. And they make the whole house sing. Come on, somebody. They got that thing, man, and they can pray, and, and they know how to pray with a song in it. Amen. And they can pray that thing so good, and make you feel something.
on the inside. And then you say, I can't pray like that. Well, ain't nobody say you gotta pray like that. A prayer warrior understands that all I'm doing when I pray is I'm having a little talk with Jesus. I'm telling him all about my tongue. The watch is about my tongue. Luke 18 and 1. Then he spoke a parable of them that men ought always to pray and not to lose heart. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. This isn't just the disciple. This isn't just the pastor. This isn't the deacon or the trustee. This is every member. We, the people, must learn how to pray and become prayer warriors. We need to pray 24-7. That don't mean you're on the all the whole time. How many know you can pray while you're walking? You can pray while you're standing. You can pray, but be careful with this one. You can pray while you're driving. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Just, just be careful you don't get caught up. Yeah. In a moment. Amen. But I believe if you're really in the spirit, God will help you. Amen. He ain't going to let you crash into nobody. Ephesians 6 18. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Be watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication. We've got to become prayer warriors. There's some of you who like Mark 13, 32, and 33. But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Verse 33. Take heed, watch, and pray. For you do not know the time. And there are people walking around right now, and I told y'all I'm not one of those doomsday prophets. Amen. Mm -hmm. There are people walking around telling you, better get ready, because he's coming back. He's coming back now. I see the sign. He's coming back now. He coming. I don't know when he's coming back. <laughs> but what I do know is that he's coming back. And what he told me is I'm not to worry about the time. I'm not to spend time worrying about when he's coming back. What I ought to do is watch and pray. I've got to become a prayer warrior and be praying in season out of season. I've got to pray when I wake up in the morning. I've got to pray as I travel through the day. I've got to pray when I lay down in the morning. And I hope that I'm sleeping. My mind is still praying because we've got to know him. And the power of his resurrection, we must be filled with the Holy Spirit. We must be holy. We must shine. Just that 
the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life for a ransom for many. Jesus said, I'm not here to have you serve me, but I came to serve for you. I came to give my life, and I'm telling you to do likewise. He said, you've got to be a servant. If you want to be first, make yourself the least. If you want to be the greatest, make yourself a servant. Make that all right with our God. God said, I don't want you to lift yourself up above anybody else. Understand that the same God that you call on and the same God that will reach out to them, the same God that clean you up is the same God that can clean them up. We must know him. We must be filled with the spirit. We must be holy. We must shine as light. We must be prayer warriors. We must be servants of the most high God. Which means we serve one another. Number seven, we the people must become students of the word. As we go forth in 2024, you got to study the word. Don't oh, just gross over it, amen. And go through it. We have tools in place. We have those daily word back there, amen. And, and, and you can pick up one of those. And I stop my day off with those daily word. I, I downloaded all my on my cell phone. And one of the first things I did in the is I go, I go here and I find a word for you today. I stop my day reading word for you today. And they have a scripture verse and I go and I read that. And then of course there are those people who are sending out daily uh, messages. I get too many of them. Amen. I can't read them all because I got work to do. But, but they're sending those daily messages out. Amen. I had to tell the guy, I'm sorry, I didn't read the guy. Asked, did you get the message? I said, yeah, I did. Yeah, I read it. He said, did you read it? No, I didn't. Yeah, I read it. Hey, man. I couldn't lie to him. No, I, I didn't read it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Maybe next time I'll read it. But we, the people, must become students of the Word of God. Paul told Timothy to do what? Study to show yourself approved. A work with that. Need to not be ashamed, rather than what? dividing the word of truth. You got to study. You got to meditate on Philippians 4 9 talks about all those things for 8 through 9. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate, think on. Study these things. The things which you learn and receive and heard and saw in me, these do it. The God of peace will be with you. You've got to study the word. He told Joshua in Joshua 1 8, he said, Joshua, this book of the law shall not be from your mouth, but you should meditate that study. Meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then. When you become a student of the word, you meditate on the word to observe to do it. For then you will make your way prosperous. And then you will have what kind of success? Good success. Prosperous and good success. This is what God is offering us when we the people come together. When we the people recognize who we are. In 2024, we must know him. We must be filled with the spirit. We must be holy. We must shine as new light. We must become prayer warriors, servants of the most high, students of his word. And the final thing is, we must be witnesses for him. When you do everything else, you ought to be a witness for him. God wants a witness. God wants somebody to be able to say, I know him for myself. God wants some of us to be able to say, I once was lost. But now, I'm fine. God wants us to be able to say, I was lost in the world. Not knowing which way to go. But when I call on Jesus, he heard my cry. In Isaiah 43, 10, he said, you are my witnesses, said the Lord. He's calling us to be witnesses. And the word tells us in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me 
in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and the end of the earth. We are called to be witnesses of the Most High God. We the people must know him and the power of his resurrection. We the people must be filled with the Holy Spirit. We the people must be holy. We must shine as new light. We must become prayer warriors. We must be servant of the Most High. We the people must become student of God's word and be a witness for somebody. The Lord has need of workers to till his field of day. So kindly he asked us to walk in Jesus' way. He wants to know, can he count on you? Oh, blessed Savior, count on me. I'll be a witness to how good you be. I'll be a witness to where you brought me from. Lord God. God, we need 
your spirit in our lives. That we will be able to conquer sin and conquer the enemy on every side that he comes upon us. Father, we magnify you. We bless you and we give you praise. For you are the only true and wise God. There is none like you who keeps on loving us more and more and more. Even though, God, sometimes we go astray, I'm so glad you still love us. You never leave us nor forsake us. You stand by us through everything. And you show us the way. And we say thank you, God. Father, we pray now for those who are less fortunate. We pray for those who don't have proper food or their shelter. We pray for those who are in the hospital, in the restaurant, wherever they may be. We pray for those, Lord God, whose minds are not functioning right. Yeah. We pray that God, that you bring peace unto them in a way that surpasses our understanding. God, we pray comfort upon the bereaved family, that you will strengthen them in their time of loss and their sorrow, that you will turn their mourning into dancing again, that we may glorify you and give you the praise. We thank you, God, for all that you have done, for how you brought us through 2023. Allow us to enter into 2024. And God, we say thank you. We give your name the glory. We give you the honor and the praise. And now, God, we go forth into 2024.